Linking London with Glasgow via the West Coast Main Line, the Royal Scot leaves Euston at 10.40 and is scheduled to run non-stop to Preston, covering the 209 miles in 140 minutes. The Express was first called the Royal Scot in 1927 and used to depart at 10 o'clock. This is South Kenton. The next bridge, at Kenton, carries the other former GCR route to Aylesbury, along with the Metropolitan Lines to Amersham. We pass to the side of Rugby's great barn of a station, opened on July the 3rd, 1885, with a dance for 2,000 people on the huge island platform. Admission sixpence, proceeds to the local hospital. Choose ten people at random to name the first railway junction they can think of, and nine will say crew. This world-famous town began life as a halt on the Grand Junction Railway. It served the village of Monks Coppenall and was named after the nearby manor house, Crew Hall. Three days before the Grand Junction opened, lines from Crew to Manchester and Chester were authorised. This guaranteed that it would soon become a major railway centre. The lighter and neater appearance of the 1970s electrification equipment is immediately apparent. The signalling is now under the control of Warrington Power Box, opened in 1972 as part of the electrification scheme. It covers 62 route miles and allowed no fewer than 51 mechanical boxes to be closed. But due to a late start from Euston, caused by an unattended baggage incident, and the earlier excursion onto the slow line, we're now running 37 minutes late. For some, this is the end of the journey, while for others, it's only the beginning. The Royal Scot eases out of Preston Station, under the road bridge and towards File Junction. The M6 was opened in 1970 and the Loon Valley is one of the best places in Britain to see the difference between the environmental impact of a mainline electric railway and a six-lane motorway. There follow three more miles of falling and level track before the climb to Shap begins south of T-Bay. A mile and a half at 1 in 146 as a prelude to the four miles at 1 in 75. The valley bottom widens briefly, the site of a Roman fort at Borrow Bridge, a cold rainy spot which must have been one of the least desirable postings in the Empire.
The four miles of one in 75 before Shap Summit are no real obstacle to a modern electric locomotive. It's possible to reach the top with a full train at over 90 miles an hour, with some passengers remaining unaware of the task completed. Lockerbie's population of about 3,000 is served by only a handful of trains. The station, opened in 1848, is another example of the work of William Tite. The stone walls, heavy roof and stepped gable ends are very much in the Scottish tradition. There's a speed limit of 15 miles an hour on all lines as we pass over the Clyde Bridge and into Glasgow Central. A superb example of railway architecture and the pride of the Caledonian when it opened in 1879.